At the temple of Apollo in Delphi, there is an ancient inscription that's over 2,000 years old. It reads, Know thyself. And this was the favorite axiom, the mantra of the highest philosophers of the time, including Socrates, who would constantly say it, Know thyself. And this is the one thing the high achievers do at such an exceptional level that the vast majority of the population doesn't. They have a high degree of self-awareness, which gives them leverage in their decision-making over the long term. Because if you can make bad decisions in the long term at a higher rate than the next person, you're going to be vastly more successful due to the compounding effects of time. By the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to know yourself at such a high level that you can achieve whatever you want to achieve quicker than you think is possible. We all understand that people are different. The parents of twins would tell you that despite the twins having the same DNA, they too are different. One likes to eat a lot, one doesn't eat as food as much. One is very loud and cries, the other one is more quiet. One likes to shit a lot, the other one plays with his toys. Same DNA, different outcomes. We understand this at a logical level, but at a subconscious level, the vast majority of the population disregards this information. This is why most people follow a path that's not best suited for them. They follow a path that has been engineered by someone else with more awareness. They go to the same schools, study the same degrees, uh, have kids at the same time, live in the same neighborhoods because they don't know themselves. They don't know their unique strengths. Knowing yourself is about identifying your unique context and leveraging your unique strengths within that context. Take someone like LeBron James. He is a physical phenomenon. Like he's six foot eight, just a freak of nature on the basketball court. But what led to his success? It wasn't just his physical attributes, because there's a whole bunch of people that are six foot eight, six foot nine, seven feet tall in the NBA with the physical gifts. It also was his mental hardware. To be a high performer, you need to have a particular mindset that's somewhat like a mental disorder, a bit psychotic. They actually did a study on a bunch of athletes. I believe there were Olymp people that were competing in the Olympic Games. And they asked these athletes if they would sacrifice a portion of their life in order to win a medal, would they take that deal? And the vast majority of them said, yes, they're willing to die for that success. It's a psychotic mindset that not everybody has. So he has the body, the mindset, and also was at the right place at the right time in terms of playing in a particular high school where there were scouts, etc. If LeBron James was born in Africa with two out of three of those variables, if he was born in Zimbabwe, he likely wouldn't be this mega star that he is today. Or if he was born in India, it would have been more difficult for him to achieve that success because it's a different context. So knowing yourself is about looking at your environment and then scouting the opportunities that are appropriate for you and disregarding the ones that are not. Because just because someone else did something doesn't necessarily mean that that's the right path for you or that's the most optimal way to the goal for you. What you also have to do is identify your strengths. I remember when I was in high school, I wasn't very good at English at the time, but I had this teacher who taught me English and I went from position number 22 out of 24 in my English class to number two. So I realized I had somewhat of a skill or a talent for it because I progressed so quickly within two years. So when I go into business, I leverage this skill set. People always tell me about how my emails are different from other emails I've written. My articles are different from other articles I've read, uh, they've read. Even these videos, the base of these videos is typically written content. So I've leveraged that in order to grow my business. Whereas if someone wasn't as good at writing or English, I wouldn't recommend them to focus on that. Just as someone who might not have the best voice should not aim to become a world-class singer because there's limitations. You need to see what you're good at and double down on that and disregard the other things you're not good at. Which moves us to weaknesses. You also need to identify your weaknesses because although there is this thing called the growth mindset, we can change. Sometimes just making incremental improvements in one area that's your weakness is not going to do much in terms of your overall success. Sometimes you just have to disregard the weakness. I'll give you an example. When I was studying engineering, I could do the work. My brain is a very right brain. I'm more of a creative type, but I could do the equations, the differential equations, the Laplace transforms, what have you. You could tell me what to do and I could do it. But I knew 
at a core level that this was not aligned with my unique skill sets. It felt very robotic. It felt like I wasn't uh, doing the right thing that I should be doing. Whereas some other people have that rational mind, that logical mind, and they thrive in that type of environment where there's set rules, there's set principles, there's methodology that they have to follow. So you need to pay attention to that, to your intuition and what is telling you about if something is right for you or not. Now in the business world, this ability to discern your strengths and weaknesses is well known. There is a type of entrepreneur called a visionary. Think of someone like Elon Musk. Think of someone like Steve Jobs. The visionary has these big ideas. They seem to not have many limiting beliefs in terms of what is possible and they can envision a different world. The visionary, a lot of times, isn't the best person to actually execute on the business. That's why we tend to have operators or integrators. This is the person that works inside the business, doing the day-to-day -day management, following the blueprint, looking at the numbers, taking a look at the CRM, talking to the marketing department. They're the day-to-day -day operators that run the business and they're really good at that because they're very numbers-based and focused and can see the data and make strategic decisions based on that. Whereas the visionary can see the bigger picture, the whole picture and can, from some unique perspective, some unique skill, make intuitive decisions about if the company as a whole is moving in the right direction or the wrong direction, decisions that might elude the integrator. Typically in successful businesses, you have a visionary and you have an integrator. There's a book on this called Rocket Fuel that you can check out that dives deeper into that process and why that's such a good combination. So what does this mean for you? You need to take audit of all your strengths or your weaknesses or the biases that your brain is subject to. We have cognitive biases, the mental fallacies that you always fall for. Take audit so that you can have a better understanding of who you are as a person where you make mistakes often and where you're strong. So your strong points double down on. Use the 80-20 rule, double down, triple down on that because you're gonna get the most results from that process. Your weaknesses, try to delegate them to someone else or eliminate them if they're not necessary. So for example, uh, I'm a good video editor, but these days I just delegate it to someone else because that's not my zone of genius. I'm looking for leverage in business and in life. So I just pay someone to do it. Perhaps you can mow your own lawn, but maybe that's not the best use of your time. You should be working on your research project or you should be working on that next business. Delegate the mow lawning. <laughs> pay some kid 50 bucks to mow your lawn. Pay someone to come once a week, maybe clean your house if that's possible so that you can save time and focus on what really matters. So this is how you know yourself and this is how you gain that extra bit of leverage that's gonna help you live and die well. If you want to learn more about knowing yourself, make sure to download the free book, Thriving, down there in the comment section or in the description. Uh, you won't regret it. It's gonna really show you how to master your mind and make better decisions in the long term. Peace.